you know, let's look at convolution neural networks with PyTorch. I am going to run this section of code at the top. I am running this in Colab current. And what this part does, it gives me several things from previous modules. Just to quickly explain them, this is used to print out just a nice time span when I want to time something. Early stopping lets me train until the validation set starts to not improve anymore and it prevents overfitting. It lets the neural network stop training. And then finally, we check to see which type of hardware accelerator we have available. In Colab, we're using CUDA. Now for this one, you might run out of memory if you're using standard setting or if you have too small of a GPU. So if you're just using a T4, you might run out of, out of memory, I am going to use an A4. If you need to use it on a T4, you'll need to scale some things back or run it just entirely on a CPU, then it's just going to go, go slower. So we run that again, and it detects Colab and also detects CUDA, which is good. And we're going to use the convolution neural networks, which essentially scan across the input image and look for individual patterns using kernels that it's going to train. And also it uses max cooling layers, which essentially downsample, make, remove pixels from the image, make it lower resolution. And you tend to just sort of cycle through these two steps until you finally get to dense layers, which are used to actually classify. In this case, this is a classification neural network. We're going to see both types, but this is classifying the 10 digits. That's why the final output is actually 10. So this is how it works. You set up a kernel size. In this case, it's four by four. And it's just going to scan across the convolution neural network. And it's going to go through a number of steps. I give you the formula to calculate that. So it's that way, say it's learning to detect a corner. It can detect that same corner anywhere in the image. That's one of the major innovations of convolution neural networks. And then max pulley layers. This essentially just downsamples it. So you had three pixels across here, three down. So you had six pixels across, six down. It basically divides it sort of in half if that's the scaling factor you're using. And it gets the maximum of the colors in each of those. In this case, it was eight. So eight goes there. Two is the max there. Two, uh, six is the max there. And so on. We won't go too much into the theory really or any further into the theory of these two, but these are layers that are interchanged typically in these convolution neural networks. I'm going to show you how to do a regression on these. We're going to do the paper clips data set. This is a data set that I give you the link to here, but I created this data set. These are all entirely generated images. You have a bunch of paper clips of different sizes. And the challenge for the students in this Kaggle that I gave them uh, about a year ago is to count how many paper clips are in the image. So that's definitely a regression image. Here we're telling it where to download the paper clips to. If you're in Colab, you're just going to put them into content. If you're downloading them locally, you're going to need to put a meaningful directory in there. And it downloads them into a directory called paper clips with these lines of code right here. And then we also have a CSV file that goes with it that it actually gives the clip counts for each of the file names. So that's what you're going to use to actually train this thing. We print out the amount of training and validation that, that we have selected. And we're going to create a class here called Clip, clip Cloud Dataset that basically brings that CSV together with those actual images. We're also going to make use of transformers. Transformers, we'll see a lot of different things they can do. They can flip images, they can resize them. This allows us to create augmented training data. We're also going to do a transformer here. This is a common transformation that is done. Just take a lot of, take the red, green, and blue close to half of the, the pixel range because it's going to go between zero and one uh, to, to 0 0.5. These are fairly standard values that sort of normalize the red, green, and blue. And then the standard deviations. These are all pretty close to each other, but they're, they're, there's a paper on that that explains why that actually is. I don't honestly recall the exact reason, but that does give better values instead of using 0 0.5 across the red, green, and blue. See if I can find a source on that. I did put some information on this. It really comes from ImageNet originally. 
Then we create the neural network, which is going to have convolution layers and max pooling layers. Uh, the criterion or the loss function is going to be mean square error loss. And then we're going to run it and train it. And it, it, it finishes training after the requested number of FX with a loss of around 13. So you take the square root of that. Not, not really a bad loss at all on this data set. Now let's see how we would actually score this data. If we wanted to, to produce some values for it, we would, because we're not going to be updating the gradients or calculating the gradients. So we would loop through the all of the test data and get the images and essentially break it up into the batch sizes and then concatenate it together. And then we create a pandas sample.csv. This is basically what you would use to upload this to Kaggle, like if you were scoring it. We're also going to see how we can classify images. And we're going to use the Iris data set, but not the normal Iris data set. I, I created this data set. I scraped images of the three types of Iris flower and put those all into a data set. And the way this is stored is we have directories named Iris Setosa, Iris Versicolor, Iris Virginica. And by putting them into those, that's how we're labeling it. And that's a very common way to, to, to label that. So we download these, unzip the zip file, and download that zip file and unzip it and take a look. You'll see the three directories for the three classes. Actually, you can see it right here, even in text. Those are the three directories, three types of Iris. Each of those would have a bunch of JPEGs. The fact that which directory the JPEG is in is the label for which image it is. We're going to do a bit more complicated transformations. Notice we're doing random flips because we're flipping them around because it doesn't really matter what's up for the iris. We could also have done this with the paper clips, but this will give us better results because we're getting augmented data. It's like we have additional images to train on now because we, we flip these around. Doing the same sort of normalization that we did before, bringing everything to within 0 0.5 so that we don't have the big 0 and 255 numbers that we would have. And then we get our training and test sets and we set up the neural network with all these convolution layers and max pooling layers, just, just like before. Learning what parameters to put on these, generally you want to do narrow it in, make it smaller as it's going to the output layer. But honestly, this is trial and error. And we will see how to use auto machine learning to help to define these, but typically tuned by hand, you really just want to try to come up with, with the best combination you can. I really just can't give you much as I would like to hard and fast rules for how you would set each of these. These are hyperparameters and tuning hyperparameters is, is a big deal in machine learning and many, many strategies for those. And also you might tend to use auto ML. We'll learn about auto ML later. I create a little function here that performs a validation. So you pass in the model and then one of the batch loaders that you created when you loaded the data set. And what it's really doing is using whatever uh, loss function you've defined, and it just calculates it across each of the batches and then takes the average error and returns that to you. We'll see that we make use of this inside of this loop. I put it in a separate function because if I just put it down here, this just makes this thing gigantic and unwieldy. So what we're doing is we're doing batches. We're looping across each of the epochs. I go ahead and show you how to do batches on, on this one. This the, the previous one, the paper clips, did everything in one big batch. That's not required. You could use the same technique on the paper clips above. It's not like one is tied to classification, one is tied to regression. So we're looping across the epochs. Those are complete trips through the train set. I'm setting a thousand. We probably won't reach a thousand because I'm also using early stopping, as you can see here. So I get the, the steps. The steps are how many batches we're going to process. And then I loop across the batches with the labels, printing out a progress bar. I calculate the loss or the gradients anyway, and use the optimizer to do the backward step, just like we've done many times with, uh, with PyTorch. And then I'm going to calculate the validation loss using that validation function that I had up there, pass that off to early stopping, determine if early stopping has kicked in or not. And here you can see we start to train through it. And early stopping eventually does kick in and we're, we get a accuracy of about 63%. 
not great. It's also very hard to classify iris flowers based just on their images because they, they tend to look very, very solid. Here are some additional resources that you may wish to look at for, to go deeper into the convolution neural networks. There's entire courses on convolution neural network. Thank you for watching this video. And if this was helpful, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel so that you can see future installments of this course. Thank you very much.